Hey guys, Brian with Benham Brewing here. Welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time here, we support home brewers with tutorials, product reviews, and a live chat feature on our site to help you through your brew day 911s. Please subscribe to our channel to keep content like this coming. Today's video, we are talking about the five most common methods of getting oxygen into your wart. Let's get to it. All right guys, first and foremost, before we start talking about the five methods you can use or the five most common methods you can use to oxygenate your wort, let's talk about why oxygen is important. The yeast, who are a huge part of fermentation, oxygen plays a huge part in their ability to be able to ferment cleanly and to have a good growth rate in that initial phase. Most manufacturers will recommend about five parts per million at a minimum to have proper yeast health. Uh, for us, I really believe eight to 10 is more optimal with 12 being probably the sweet spot. Um, if you're doing higher gravity beers, you need a actually higher dissolved parts per million of oxygen in those beers. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about method number one. Splashing while filling your fermenter will get you around eight parts per million. The benefits of this is no extra equipment and there's no extra cost. Some of the potential cons is your max at eight parts per million, which might not be enough for higher gravity beers. Also, you're aerating with unfiltered air, which can increase your risk of infection from wild yeast or bacteria. Honestly, I've used this method for years and I've never had an issue. And generally speaking, when starting out, this method is absolutely perfect. Shaking your carboy back and forth for five minutes will get you to eight parts per million. If you can purge the headspace with pure oxygen, you can actually increase that. Uh, now, some of the benefits with this, there's no extra equipment. You just use exactly what you have. Now, the problem with this is that you need to be very careful, especially with the glass carboys. Uh, and you want to make sure you cushion the bottom so they don't break when you're shaking them. And then shaking them for five minutes and rocking it back and forth can be very tiring and extremely boring. Stirring aggressively with a whisk or a paint stirrer, make sure it's new and not used, for one minute will get you to eight parts per million. Now the pros of this, uh, you can get to your eight parts per million faster than any of the other methods we just mentioned. The equipment cost is minimal to none. Now some of the drawbacks with it, same risk factor uh, of infection as in the splashing method. But again, that doesn't seem to really be an issue. One caution I would say with this method is I wonder the impact on head retention post fermentation with this aggressive whipping up of the wort. Using an aquarium pump with a sterile inline filter and a center stone will get you to eight parts per million in about five minutes. Uh, you can aerate in the fermenter or in line as you transfer from the kettle. You'll need an aquarium pump, a sterile inline filter, and a center stone at the end of your hose. With a sterile inline filter, there's really no chance of infection from the ambient air, so that's a big plus. Some of the cons, of course, it is more equipment, more things to sanitize, although still really not bad. It's about $35 at the time of this filming. Uh, we will have a link in the video description below uh, for purchase, which will help support our channel. At one liter per minute, you can achieve 12 parts per million in one and a half minutes. Pros, this is the best option to achieve a higher part per million than you can achieve just using atmospheric air. As a bonus, it's much more consistent than the splashing or the stirring methods. Cons, it's extremely expensive to get all the equipment. And if you use disposable oxygen tanks instead of refillable ones, the cost goes up dramatically per batch. You're looking at around $170 initially just to get the regulator tank, hose, and stone. Check out the link at the end of our video for a review on the Blickman Oxygen Flow Regulator and a link below that to purchase. Keep in mind that there are more ways to get oxygen into your wart besides the five methods that we kind of talked about today. Um, the ones that we talked about are just kind of the more common ones, but there's other options out there. If you use a different method or a different combination of it, please leave a comment below and let us know what you do. We'd want to share that with other new home brewers and help them kind of achieve some awesome beers. For us here at Benham Brewing, we like to use Pure O2. We like the speed of it on the brew day. We like the consistency of it from uh, beer to beer. There's a little bit more control over that, but to be honest, you don't have to use Pure O2. As long as you can get to that eight parts per million that we recommend, your beers are going to turn out fine. They're going to be nice and clean. The yeast are going to be happy and healthy. If you feel like our video today brought you some value, please hit that like button. Also, if you subscribe, you'll let us know to continue to bring you some of this content or a lot of this content. Uh, and until next time, my friends.